the Deerfield Board of Health to order. You're on the air. Thank you, Jonathan. This is uh, Carolyn Ness from the Deerfield Board of Health. Welcome to our for a four town board of health meeting with a school committee. Um, I will call the Deerfield Board of Health uh, to order. I see David and Trevor and myself are here. Um, Fran, do you have uh, a quorum? Not yet, I don't think. We have two here, Fran. Oh, we do? Okay, we do. All right. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you call Waitley's Board of Health to order? Sure, I call the Waitley Board of Health to order. So, thank you, Fran. Thanks, How Fran. about you, Caitlin? Oh, yeah, Good evening. Um, I'm Caitlin Rock, and I will call the uh, Sunderland Board of Health to order. Uh, we have Ken Kushai and Bruce Bennett here. Great. And um, then Carl, do you have a a, um, a quorum? No, I don't think so. I think it's just me. You know, I'm supposed to have two more showing up, but they're not, they're not on yet. I'm here, right. Carl. Oh, oh, hi, Veronique. Hi. Okay. <laughs> oh, Veronique, I'm sorry. Neither one of us saw you at first. Okay. Uh -huh. Is Tilda on? I don't think so. Okay. Well, get one more. We'll have a quorum. Okay. We'll have, we'll keep an eye out for um, them. And yep. Does school committee want to um, open their meeting? Judy, we, do we have a quorum, Judy? We have six people here. I can't see, but maybe if they're here, they can shout out. I don't see Lynn. No, nope. I don't see Damien. I don't see Mary. I don't see Ashley Dion. And I don't see Missy Novak. And we got a quorum with six, correct? We have a six, yep. So go ahead and call it to order. Yep. I'll call the uh, Frontier Regional School Committee to order. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I want to start out by just saying thank you to everyone. Uh, the last time we met, it was very, everyone was very supportive of, you know, taking a break after Thanksgiving and it proved to be the right thing to do. And then we, you know, broke for uh, before Christmas. Um, break and that's proved to be a blessing as well. Um, so we need to talk about what we're going to do. And my my thoughts on this, after looking at the numbers, they dropped off dramatically, dramatically since um, our big spike after Thanksgiving. And if you look at the calendar, Christmas is a week coming up, and then a week after that. So I'm, I'm thinking of um, if our numbers stay stable and, and since we haven't even had New Year's Day or a New Year's Eve yet, um, we could be watching them. But at this point, I would, my proposal would be that the schools go remote um, on the 4th and 5th, which is Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then Wednesday's remote, and then they go back into session in-person school on the 7th and 8th. And that is two weeks from Christmas, which is really a family holiday. And families hopefully are being very prudent and paying attention so that the kids can go back to school. And, and New Year's Day is not necessarily a family holiday as much as Christmas and Thanksgiving. So we will have two weeks when we get to the 7th. And based on the numbers coming down, and what's happening in our communities, I, I, I would feel comfortable with going back to school in person on the 7th, which is Thursday, a week out from New Year's and two weeks out from Christmas. So this, I'm kind of opening us up to the other boards of health and any input from the school committees on this. Carolyn, can I ask a question please first? Sure. Um, is everybody going to talk and then we're going to have public comment or should we have public comment first and then get to the members? I'm, I'm not sure what public comment is going to be on this. Um, okay. You know, they're, they're, the numbers 
there's a huge number of people that have called in and I, I, I want to keep our discussion, you know, focused um, and see what everyone is input on from the boards of health as well as the school committee on this. So we can work together on this. And then I, then I feel like, you know, after we've sort of come to a consensus, um, then I, we would take some public comment. I, okay. I certainly don't want to cut people off, but on the other hand, we have to make the decision. And I, I, you know, I'm looking at the numbers and look what's happening in our communities. Um, gotcha. so. You want to do the board of health first and then we'll come back to my committee if anybody wants to talk in our committee. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Is there, um, Kaylin, do you want to go? She's muted. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I um, I would I would agree with the um, with that strategy. I think that um, I, I've looked at the fig facts and the figures for all for our area, and our cases are down. And um, I do expect a small surge. I'm hoping small. <laughs> Um, as people come back from their Christmas um, break, and uh, but I I think that um, like for an example, as uh, that came in today for Sunderland, uh, came in yesterday. One, two, three, four, five cases Whoa. out of the um, eight we have. Five came in yesterday, <laughs> so. Um, as you could say, we had three before that. So um, what we're going to be doing, um, so do, and those will be basically almost out of quarantine for a couple of days uh, by the time we go back to school. So I don't, I think that, um, and I, I think that we're going to be getting a few more in, um, but then these others are going to be rolling back out. So um, I think that uh, it's a good strategy. And I think that by the Sunday before then, we'll, we should know whether we're gonna to need to actually close the school for that week or not. So anticipating going back on the Wednesday would be, I think a great idea. And if we need to close it, we'll know. And we'll know by Monday and we can get back together. I mean, we'll, we'll be talking either way, but we'll, we can make a decision and it won't be like Sunday night and, making phone calls or sending out, you know, an emergency email to everybody saying, we'll go remote on Monday, um, we'll know. So I think that's a fair, I think that's a good, uh, a good plan. But um, I don't anticipate it exploding. I think it's gonna go up, but um, I don't anticipate it exploding. So I think that's a great plan. Could I just make a quick statement? Just anybody who's not speaking, just mute your mic, please. We have, you know, there's probably a hundred people on here. Just, and, and you may not know that you're you're open, but if you could just mute, that'd be, that'd be great. Thank you. Caitlin, this is Bruce Bennett. Um, I could live with that proposal of opening up on the 7th. Um, I, I just wish there was a way that we could lobby our legislatures or the governors to have the teachers moved up higher in the order of vaccinations. Because that's a lot of my concern. Our teachers, you know, some of them are 50, 60 years old, and I think they're more susceptible than the younger population. And, you know, Bruce, I, I completely hmm. uh, understand why? that. And um, yeah, why? As, as we, you know, um, you know, I looked into it and I, I look at that and I, I consider them um, up there with up there with the uh, first responders um, and, you know, their unions and their lobbyists sh should be dealing with this and should be fighting for them to be moved up. Absolutely. Um, I don't know how a sport of health people can actually do that um, or, but I'm, I'm right with you. And um, we talked that you and I discussed this about, you know, wait, you know, 
trying to get them vaccinated, um, you know, and, and I, I understand that that would be a measure to have them feel more safe and secure uh, going into the schools. When we look at who is the most vulnerable to actually catch COVID while they're at their place of business, teachers do not rank up high because schools are not the site of the highest transmission. And so if they're, if, you know, the experts are going to rank who should get vaccinated, teachers aren't going to move up higher. I mean, they, they should move up to the level of first responders. However, what we're looking at is right now, we're still working on the medical, uh, what they call COVID facing medical and the um, elder residential, and then moving on to the first responders. And as of right now, there's been 35,618. Well, this is last week. Uh, they, the new the new numbers come out uh, in a day or two. 35,618 doses have been given and 146,000 doses have been shipped to, uh, you know, shipped to Massachusetts. Franklin County, as of last week, had 500 doses shipped to our hospitals and employee healthcare um, things. 500 doses. So, and we're looking at first responders alone. Um, Carolyn, did you say um, how, how many hundred thousand? I don't know. Well, I think there's 159,000 first responders. Okay, like so that. we are so far. Yeah. So if we were going to wait for the teachers, um, we are so backed up that, and, and I, I'm not saying that, that they don't deserve it. They deserve it. Absolutely. But we would not, in essence, and that would be for first dose, then 28 days, then second dose. We would be well into the spring if we were going to wait for the teachers to get vaccinated to get the kids back into school. And schools are not the site of the highest level of transmission of the, the virus. So they really, I mean, that's not where we'd be giving. Well, I, I, I think I just want to say that we're volunteering, uh, South County is volunteering our um, site at the highway garage to make sure that we can vaccinate as soon as possible. We filled out the paperwork and we're going to make it happen as soon as we, you know, as soon as there's any vaccine available and it, and it might roll out faster with more vaccine you know, being produced. Um, so who, I'm just the voice we really don't know the schedule, gloom. but it should be phase, <laughs> we're in phase three right now. And I, phase three, I would say is spring. I, I'm just, I'm just the voice of the worst. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I just want to be the voice of absolute reality. Yes, I want to have a mega shipment come in and I want Carolyn to be that happy face in the corner telling everybody, woohoo, we got it, we got it, we got it. Let's mobilize and get everybody vaccinated. I'm the one with the pen, the paper, and the calculator saying this isn't adding up. And that's who I am. I'm, you know, but I'm also saying that the schools are not the high the site of transmission. When you put pen to paper and look at who is getting sick and who is not getting sick. And I just think that in educating our children, this is a high priority. And I understand that the te teachers are scared, huh. teachers are afraid, and they need to evaluate whether they should be there or not. And parents should evaluate whether they should have their children there or not. And that should be a personal decision. But in an unmasse decision, this is not where transmission is occurring. And that is my opinion. You're muted, Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Kaylin. Fran, do you wanna um, speak now? Sure. Um, yeah, our case loads are, are shrinking too, though they're not where we'd like them to be. And uh, there is no school transmission to this point. 
And I think uh, given that, um, we look at the numbers, we see where there might be a spike maybe after the holidays, maybe not. Um, it's wise to do a little bit of a delay in opening, maybe even a couple extra days than that, but I'd uh, be from the Board of Health and Waitley, at least from my perspective, okay with that delay, slight delay. Uh, Mike, I don't know if he's got anything to add to that. Oh, nothing to add. I'm, 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 I okay. agree with you 100%. Yep. Um, Carl, do you want to um, mm. speak for Conway? Yeah, well, Conway is, is in much the same case. We're, we're, we've got a couple new uh, cases, but they're all related to social gatherings and stuff like that. We have nothing really coming out of the schools. I think the, the idea of starting on the 7th would, would, be, uh, would be fine with us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, again, when we say go back in person on the 7th, that's assuming that the caseloads are consistently low and there's no transmission exposure to the schools. And that would be Darius and the school committee's decision on Wednesday before the Thursday classes. Um, can I, can Bob? I? Speak? Oh, can I, go ahead, Trevor. Sorry. Um, I, I also, you know, I think if we're going to make that decision, I think we, you know, I feel comfortable making that decision now and not just leaving it for Darius alone to decide. Um, and, and, you know, welcome to have the, the, the school committee vote on it as well. But I just feel, um, you know, I think if we're going to decide to go back on the seventh, we would take that vote now. If, in, if there is a massive spike or some reason we need to come back together and have a meeting, you know, a couple of days next week before, before that seventh, um, or if we're really not sure and we just want to pick the 11th that Monday for, to go back, um, that, that, you know, I just feel like we should make that decision and vote that tonight. And then that that's where we go. And, and, and then, um, unless there's something that changes dramatically and we need to have an emergency meeting to come back as we did, you know, again, before I just, last time it was kind of left to, to Darius to make that all on his own. And I, I just think, you know, it should be a decision that we make and then, um, you know, move forward from there. I, I am not trying to unload, offload well, it to not. Darius. I want to be clear for the public. <laughs> yeah, I just, what I meant was that we need to be on top of this right up until the time Yes. The kids go back to school. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Yes, but I think um, to follow up on what Trevor said, I think uh, the, the school should be ready should sub, a big spike happen. Um, and they have the metrics already in place, the new metrics that they should make the call. That's yeah. If, it, okay. if that's the case. So. And we would support them for sure. Absolutely. And yeah. if, if we would need to call an emergency meeting, we could easily call an emergency yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. But we also have in place, if the metrics go up, right. Dar Darius would consult the boards of health anyway. Right. And we would support right. him in closing yeah. for the week, you know, the last two days and, you know, regardless. But if we want to make a most, if someone wants to. Well, I was, uh, before we do that, Caitlin, we'll I want to hear from the school committee and just see what the school Terrific. committee's thoughts are on this. I know we, we are the ones that actually have to vote, but um, I, would, I was hoping to be um, cooperative on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Carolyn, I, I, just want to fill, I, I just want to fill in a few people on, um, gotten a few emails today from teachers, uh, very concerned. Um, I don't think they're going to be happy with going back on the 7th huh. or 8th. Um, but there again, it is two weeks after Christmas and we know our kids aren't going to be partying at, at New Year's Eve, little mm -hmm. el elementary kids. I mean, hopefully not the high school kids either, but, uh, but that definitely Christmas two weeks. I think it's a safe time. And there again, you know, we stay on top of it. Like you guys have been do doing right along, but you know, there is some concerned teachers out there and, and rightfully so. So. Uh, of them may speak when it comes to public comment. I'm not sure, but I've read every email today. So um, in the case of the committee, um, anybody in the committee want to chime in?
I think what the, what the boards of health can tell us is that, that we cannot open until Thursday. We cannot open the building. That doesn't mean we we have purview over the educational program. We can say that's fine. We could open on we could open on Thursday, but we're not going to open until Monday. I think that that part of it is a school committee decision to make. Yeah, I we we I'm just saying that I do not. I feel like you need the two weeks, just like we needed that week after Thanksgiving, to have a break. You know, when kids were coming home from college or boarding school, and you know, had younger siblings that were in school, there was just and 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 just family dynamics. I, I felt comfortable having a week break. I feel like if we go back on the seventh, the earliest that I would feel comfortable, and it, with lower cases, with our caseloads happening, um, you know, dropped right off. Um, from that spike. So if we maintain the lower case loads and we have that two weeks from Christmas, to, again, I I would feel comfortable opening the schools on January 7th. Just I not a little bit before though, because we need the time to make sure that the cases are stable. That's all. I mean, I felt we need stable time for stability. Um, to and trends, the trends are definitely going in the right direction. They're going um, correctly, and and the profiles are not for transmission in the schools. So that's, but we want to follow that to make sure that that's really, you know, that is actually stays true. I guess it's it's important that that whole separation of powers <laughs> type thing is that the boards of health can close can can close buildings and for health and safety of the community um but so we can't override the school committee's scheduling and that's not our purpose not our job nothing the only thing I would say as a Board of Health member is, is I would feel that there's no reason to close based upon the metrics. And if the fear of uh, staff members is not a reason, a he community health and safety reason <laughs> to close a school building. And so as far as the health department is concerned, that is not a health and safety reason to close a school building. If the school department feels that the staff's fear is a reason, then that's fine. But I'm talking about public health. Mm -hmm. Any other school committee members? I see Olivia pop on for a second. You wanna go first, Olivia? No, it's all right. I was just gonna, I wasn't sure. I, just making sure everyone knew that just because we're not we're putting off to maybe the seventh or the eighth it doesn't mean we're not going back to school it would just mean we're remote at that point right so we're not extending vacation or anything like that um so um that it would be remote um for for that time um and um a lot of people did get together with their families over christmas um and travel quite a bit and so um i think it's very prudent. Um, I was actually thinking um, that people wouldn't be back in school till the, you know, that next Monday. Um, but, you know, I'm always all for more in school. So I, I would be happy with the Thursday or Friday. Thank you, Olivia. Bob, I could weigh in too. Is that Keith? Yes. Yeah. I was trying to raise my hand. I couldn't get it to go up. I only see four people and I don't, you know, I, I have to yell at people, hey, come on on. And then I heard your voice, so go ahead. So I, I would echo what Olivia said. I was looking at all the numbers too, and it seems like that 10 to 12 day range out uh, is when the, the, the case is really spiked, which is a lag because the, the spread is happening before that. So it's like that 10 day range. So I would actually be really comfortable with Monday the 11th. I, um, I think like there's not, I, I'm the first one to try to bring kids back, but I don't necessarily think that we have to rush. <laughs> This Thursday is like the earliest we can go back that we really feel comfortable. I'm I'm 
comfortable with taking a few days, taking a breath, and then seeing where we stand and going in on Monday and starting like. Mm -hmm. So, you, so if you were, if we were doing a straw poll, you would say the eleventh would be fine with you. Correct. And Olivia, anybody else want to chime in? Hi, this is Maureen Nichols. I agree um, with Keith that um, I'd be more comfortable with the eleventh as well. And then we could start a week, um, start the week in um, the hybrid mode. Of course, we'd have to look look at it again before um, the 11th and if we need to have an emergency meeting, but I would agree with the 11th. Okay. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah. Anybody else from Frontier want to chime in? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in there, Bob. Hey, um, so, you know, the, the, the first thing that I just, so there's, there's a segment of our student population that even though when we're go, from now on, even though we're going, we're, we're in remote is still in the building. Isn't that correct? Um, and, and, and we're not really talking about the whole segment. We're talking as if decision or I, I don't know, but we should talk, we should talk about that segment of the population. And uh, you know, the, the, that I'm talking, I, I, I mean the, the, those students that have um, IEPs that require individual, uh, you know, daily or whatever services in person. Um, and that uh, by law we have to provide. And so, you know, we, th and then the second thing that I'd also like to address is just, you know, is this sort of a, I mean, I, you know, it, um, I don't know, a, a, a pattern now, I mean, are, is there gonna be now a desire to like for uh, Martin Luther King birthday, for president's birthday, for those sorts of thing to, to wanna to just take a step back a week or two and see whether there's increases or, I, mean, I, I don't think so. No. All right. Good. Good. Because, because, like I, you know, I, what, um, if the metrics, if the health board of health says that the metrics are are, are indicate in person instruction, <laughs> then I'd like to go back to in person instruction as soon as the board of health says it's appropriate and proper. Um, so I, 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 I'd vote for that. But, and then the last point that I'd like to make is that, um, you know, I, I, I've never really been parts of committees that do public comment at the end and and it, it with this particular issue there are just so much anxiety and so much parental interest in this particular issue that's being decided tonight that um it, it really be I, i'd like to just people to think about whether it's wiser maybe to have public comment before a decision is indicated and that be, be because you know um, I, I get that there's a hundred members of the public and I, you know, but the only thing worse than public comment is no public comment when there's so much apathy that nobody feels participating in the democratic process is worth it because decisions are made in advance before their ability to influence them. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, I'm always big on that. Um, and, you know, reasonable time limit, one, two minutes, but let people have their say before you make votes and um, because people really care about this. So I'm sorry, that's it. No, no, hey, Phil, I just, all I wanted, I think I'm gonna chime in what Carolyn's gonna say. I think she was trying to get everybody's point of view, school yes. committee members, and if we if we decide to go to the 11th as a group, then some of the people who might speak on public comment may not say anything because, you know, some of them are teachers and some of them want to go out further. And I think the 11th is, is a safe bet from what I've heard already. And I want everybody to hear or talk so I can, you know, get, a, we can get a feel before we end this meeting tonight. And I was the one who mistakenly said, make a motion. I can easily be, have my mind changed. Uh, me that too. Is, absolutely. <laughs> so, and it was my mistake. Well, I, I just wanted us to have some kind of consensus. So as we listen to the comments, that you know we'll be able to um, adjust, and you know I, I, it seems like we're having sort of a consensus already. So um, if we want to open it up to public comment, I'm I'm okay with that as long as everyone else is, why don't, and, why don't and I... felt that they um, had an opportunity to speak. I know I haven't heard from. I know I saw. I, I can't see everyone here, but I know Dave. Wolfram was on. Um, Dave, do you want to say anything? And I wasn't sure if there was a couple more um, 
uh, if Carl had any more Conway Board of Health members in his mind. Well, the way I look at it the, uh, as a Board of Health member, as long as everything is stable by the 7th, I think as a Board of Health, we can okay to go ahead at uh, the release by the 7th, but the school committee can make up their mind when they want to start after that. They just can't start before. Right. Um, I think I think that is, is feels clear that the from a Board of Health point of view, we, I mean, I just felt like we needed that two weeks. And, and that's just my personal opinion. Um, the numbers, like I said, have dropped off, at least in Deerfield. And from my conversations with uh, the other public health nurses and other boards of health, it seems like everybody is fairly stable. Um, but uh, and but it's higher than it was in the summer. And um, so we have to watch it. That's all. Um, okay, let's open it up to... Um, can, we, can, we, can we just finish up with the school committee members? If sure. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't mean to no. cut it off. No, let's, let's, get our, let's get all the committee members in. And then, then, like I said, maybe some will speak. And some, once they find out, if we do decide on the 11th, they may not speak because some of them are teachers that are listening in. Any other members? Um, this is Maureen Nichols again. I just wanted to say I agree with Phil on the vulnerable learners about having them come in person as much as possible. That's all. Thanks, Maureen. I guess there was no other school committee members that want to speak, Carolyn. So if you want to open it up to public comment. Okay. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not running the, uh, so Alex, can you, is there anyone that um, you have raising their hands or want to speak? <laughs> uh, yep, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, I don't see anybody raising their hand at the moment, but. Okay. Can we talk about, uh, I guess, winter sports was part of this, but I think we voted um, on it last time and, and we voted to, or do we need to finish this first? Yeah. We well, I, I guess we should finish this first. But there's a uh, Mel raising her hand. Oh. Hello. I, I, yeah. So I have a little guy in the Sunderland preschool who is he's not on any IEP, but he just he needs to be with his teachers. He needs to be with his friends. And <laughs> as a full-time working mom, it's very hard for me to work and be a teacher. It's very, very, very hard. There is, um, you know, there is the COVID Child Care Act, but that, you know, that doesn't pay the bills. I still pay for school. I, you know, I get my bill every month and I got to pay that bill. And now it, it's just, it's, it's hard for me as a mother to be a parent and a teacher. I, I'm just, I just wanted to get that point across. Um, it, you know, I, I understand I work in the healthcare industry. I know how important it is, but if the board of health says, you know, like, look, we can do this by all means, let's please get our children back. Thanks, Mel. Uh, Sarah has her hand up. Maybe, maybe not. Anybody else there? Don't see anybody. Well, Caitlin, would you like to make a motion? Uh, yeah, I. Um... Caitlin, can I can I just do a point of order? Not a point of order, but just a sure. mess that we have with our the way we have things set up here. I just want to say it out loud so that you can vote according to that. So, the issue is tonight. I have Frontier here because we we're going to talk about athletics with the boards of health, and then we added on the discussion of coming back from the closure to the Board of Health to make a, to give some decision on. And we knew it was a little early in the week for it, we, with that being said. If 
the board of health, and this is fine, if the board of health does, goes, says the seventh based on the metrics and not the 11th based on, um, as was just discussed, we, we all heard that. I'm gonna have to have four additional school committee meetings on Monday and Tuesday next week for the elementary schools to have the same vote if Frontier then votes to go the 11th so that all the schools have the same conversation mm -hmm. in, in, in with that. So I'm proposing, okay, maybe this is in, in school committee, you can step in. This is your, my boss is to shut me down on this idea that, that you hear the school committee's thing and it's proposed to go with the school committee to the 11th, saying, but what was said in conversation um, for the ease of the other committees, you understand what my problem is, or it can just be this is the problem we have when we have 37 people involved with closing of schools. And that's what we have. And so if we just have to have those meetings that way, that's fine too. Um, but I'm just putting it out there. If if the Board of Health say we recognize what the, the, the or may have Frontier go first and see if they vote that way. And then you could say that we would recognize the closed schools to the 11th and the other boards would not have to meet in order to close school into the 11th unless they wanted to do something different and then they could have a meeting as such. But right now we'd be forcing four additional school committee meetings to get together to do that, which doesn't make sense. But it, they also have a process in this as well. So I don't know. I guess I wanted to put that out there, but Thank you. just that it's a mess. It's a mess. And I, I didn't, you know, I didn't see it playing out exactly this way. I'll ask, let me ask you a question, Darius. If the Board of Health votes on the 11th, then we won't have to have the meetings. We can just right. go what they say for the 11th. Yeah. That true? What I was trying to say is if this, if the Frontier School Committee is saying they would like to see the 11th as the date, is, that's what I heard. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's why I say maybe Frontier goes first to make sure voices go with that vote. Mm -hmm. Then if the Board of Health recognizes that for the for the operations of all four towns to be the same changes their thing to the the 11th that but i also could say the board of health you could also say you know what we're not stepping down like caitlin said our job is just to look at the metrics and the metrics say the seventh and that that's fine too and i and i will just have other meetings that's not a big deal i'm just talking about there's a lot of different meetings would then open up and people may not I lose the I lose the unison of of this working together, and that's what mm -hmm. I don't. This mm -hmm. is what the difficulty that we have with thirty. Just for people <laughs> hearing me say thirty seven, there is actually thirty seven people. There's twenty five school committee members and twelve boards of health members, or is there mm -hmm. even more board of health members? So mm -hmm. you, you see what my problem is, and so I don't know. Looking for a solution on that. If not, we'll have multiple school committee meetings coming up. Not big. Bob, can I ask a question just to make sure I'm clear on something? Yeah. If we we're voting, what we're talking about doing is going back to the hybrid model on the 11th, mm -hmm. what model are we in on the 4th? Or is the bit, is the bit, it, are we still closed completely? In other words, I'm talking about the vulnerable learners and everybody else, the week of 4th to the 11th, are they in the building or is there no one in the building? So it's an excellent follow-up question. So to go with what Phil was saying earlier, currently we brought in, we're starting to, we haven't completely outlined the names of the different groups. We have like, we'll call them our tier one special education students. We're in the building the week prior to, to the holiday break. Um, and those are, you know, our specialized program students. So um, I would be asking if the Board of Health shut the schools down that we continue to allow those that tier one group in the buildings as we did right before break. It's a limited mm -hmm. number. The tier above that is, you know, is, it would say a significantly increased number of students. Um, and that might be going against the actual ban. But um, so again, it gets complicated because mm -hmm. school can be easily can easily say that if they're shutting the building down, the, the school committee can choose what what programs are running. Mm -hmm. I guess the exception to the rule from the boards of health. Again, this is our first pandemic and dealing with this kind of complicated mm -hmm. stuff. But that's what I'd be be looking for as well. Mm -hmm. I I guess I don't I I just don't feel like people should be in the building until the seventh because that's your two week period from Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, but this tier one, you know, if you look at the state, what they say about tier one with the state, I know. it's like an unconditional mandate that we did. I know. But only for clarification that the state is, it says that you need to prioritize them. If the Board of Health closes down, 
that you're that's what you're 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 stuck doing. I mean, I, I am advocating get those kids in, but I also am saying it. The state doesn't override the board of health, and the board of health makes that closure and says no students in the building. Um, I'm just saying that we had. I'm sorry, we have to go down this rabbit hole, but you know it does affect the kids' lives and the families' lives of those kids connect with this. Um, but we were had the students in; we were in higher numbers than we have. I mean, it wasn't the peak of those. That ugly peak is when we still had those those most we considered most vulnerable, most uh, that tier mm -hmm. one group. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the reason that I asked the question because I'm not sh I'm still not sure in my mind where those where the tier one kiddos are. Are they in the building? Or are they not in the building? If if we're going to close the building until Thursday, then I would like to get those kiddos back in the building ASAP. So if we have to vote Wednesday, so we or Thursday rather, so they can be back in the building, that's fine. If they're already in there and they're going to be in there next week, that's fine. If we want to wait for everybody else until the 11th, but I don't want to wait for that that population any longer than I have to. If it has to be Thursday, if it mm -hmm. can't be until Thursday. Then, then so be it. But I, I don't know where they are now, and I still don't, and I'm still not sure. I, I, you know, just speaking personally, I, I um, trust the administration to uh, prioritize those those people. I, I think what I'm saying when I I say we're closed, um, and we're we're not closed, we're at remote um, and not in the hybrid model until the seventh or or the eleventh, however that works out. Um, but I do trust that Darius knows and the staff know, uh, special education staff know what, you know, what priority students need to be being educated. And, you know, I'm looking at a mass of people in the schools, not really, you know, five, six, seven, you know, uh, tier 11. I don't know how many number it is, but I know it's not a large number of students that need to be um, in for, you know, for, you know, for, for in class or in-person education. I, I'm, I'm worried about um, a small group of people versus, you know, the whole school all in mass at one time. You know, that might be split in hairs, but that's, you know, I know life is not as easy as everything's not black and white, so. Right, our, our, our tier one students we're calling, I guess we're trying to label that, the ones who were in prior, just prior to break, is about two dozen students district-wide. Yeah. Okay, so um, mm -hmm. the major, most of them being at the, the, in the in one place would be the would be in frontier. So, right. mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, again smaller small amounts of smaller numbers, but the ones with extreme needs that, um, yeah. you know, need these programs. Right, Carolyn. Uh, there's a hand up. Okay. If if you'll take it, um, yeah. Lisa. <clears throat> I don't. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Lisa Gaylor. I'm a special education. Teacher. Lisa, we're having a hard time uh, listening to you. Could you speak? Could you speak up a little bit, Lisa? Question is Lisa, if you turn off your video. Sure. Is this better? Yes. Is this any better? Yes, it is. Okay, is this better? A yes. little bit. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so my, okay, I'm a teacher at Deerfield Elementary. Whoops, it just popped back on. And um, my, my, okay, my question is that if you're waiting until the seventh to make the decision or to have students go back, don't those new metrics come in basically on either that Wednesday or that Thursday? So to me, it seems to make sense to wait to have students come back in until the 11th when you have those new numbers with the new metrics that come in at the end of the week. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> we did take that, Carolyn. Oh well, yes, but we we have the numbers from every single day. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I know what the cases are in Deerfield every single day and what the exposure is. So, you know, having an 
at the waiting till the end of the week it has not really an impact on on my decision metrics come out we the public lisa not not for the boards of health right um, I'm on I'm on Maven checking that three or four or five times a day at least. Mm-hmm. Was there anyone else, Alex? Um, it doesn't look like it. Um, they're not raising their hand in Zoom. Um, I can only see so many people at one time. Um, okay. I, I think that's it. It might make sense, Carolyn, maybe to have the frontier, you know, have a discussion and a vote, and then maybe we can support them. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I didn't know if you just wanted us to vote as boards of health that we felt comfortable with the seventh. And if you decide to go back to the 11th, that's up to you. Um, I'm comfortable with the 11th also, by the way. Can I ask a yep. question again? Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, I, I asked it before, if you guys, I know you're doing like, you want to do the seventh, and then if we have to do, if we decide to do it for the 11th, we'll start off with Frontier, then we're going to still have to get together with four other boards. If if the Board of Health say the 11th, we probably <laughs> Um, uh, but I think I think uh, just I'll just reiterate. I think what he's saying is that you know it, it will be more conducive. I think you know I'm not sure it's going to be the seventh for the board of health. I really you know based on how many people are here, we have not taken that vote yet. So I think Frontier should should go ahead and vote, have a discussion, vote, and then um, then mm-hmm. we can make a decision as the board of health and see how that vote pans out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's fine with me. I, I was just throwing something out to get the discussion started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Judy, how many people on the frontier out of the 11th are here? If we only oh. have six, there's, huh? Yeah, there's six. It's you, me, Bill, Keith, Phil, and Olivia. I'm sorry, that's five. One, two, three. How, how, would, you, how would you feel voting on this for the 11th to six members? Well, just, can I just ask a question? This isn't even on our, the, our agenda. The only thing on our agenda is the vote on the winter sports thing. So are we just picking this up as a point of discussion? Mm. Are we actually picking it up as a vote? Good point. I'm waiting for somebody like Darius to say something, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to I'm sorry to chime in with like the administrative, but <laughs> I mean I'm happy to support the recommendation of the Board of Health. Like, I'm not discounting that whatsoever. I'm just saying this is not what we're here for. We're here to listen, but this is not the reason we're here to vote. If I was one of the five people who are missing tonight and we took a vote like this on something that is not on the agenda, I'd be howling like a wolf. Yeah, yeah. That's why I brought it up. So, Fran, can, go can ahead. We move, okay, so, I, you know, I, I agree. I think, you know, we call this as partially Board of Health and we've discussed it as such. And I, it's been posted as such. We should take a vote and then give a clear signal and the boards, the school committees can uh, do what they want. But I, I, I'm, from what I'm hearing, I'm perfectly uh, um, okay with moving into January 11th, the start date with the proviso that uh, should cases surge, there'll be a change. And also that the IEP students will be back in school as soon as possible. Yeah. Thanks, Fran. Yeah. Um, yes, we can have all four all four boards of health. Um, Carl in Conway would have to have a separate vote because he doesn't have a quorum. But um, mm-hmm. the three other boards of health could vote for um, January. Can we clarify the motion? Yeah, go ahead, Caitlin. Well, no. well what's the, what exactly is the motion? Well, um, Fran suggested the 11th as Darius would be supportive um, and that would be easier for him. So if we all vote as boards of health for the 11th mm-hmm. and, um, and that's fine with me. I, it's just, I didn't wanna go earlier than the 7th because that's two weeks out from Christmas. So um, waiting till the 11th is fine. Um, okay, so then I guess our motion would be that the schools remain 
in Rome till the 8th. Through the 8th, correct. And um, except I don't for, think, Except for your, whatever Darius calls them, tier one. So. And I don't think we should address that because I think that's a school issue. I think that's a school committee issue. I don't, that's not, a, remember we got to stick to the health and safety of the community. Well, we're opening up the school buildings for the yeah. other kids. <laughs> Well, in the remote, we can just say in the remote model. Yes, and how that would be the easiest. Is considered is school issue, I think, because that might change. Yep. You know. Okay. Um, I guess I'll move that the uh, the school district remain in the remote mo remote model until the eighth of December. I'll second that. Uh, for Sunderland, um, can we get a roll call vote? Yes. You said December? Yeah. yeah. December, January, 2021. Thank you, whoever just fixed that. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Um, uh, Ken, could, how do you vote? Ken votes yes. Uh, Bruce Bennett, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Caitlin Rock votes yes. Okay. Um, Deerfield Board of Health, um, I will make the uh, motion that we will keep the schools in remote through um, January 8th, 2021. I, Carolyn. Oh, wait, Trevor, you have to. I'll second, that. I'll second that motion, Carolyn. Okay, Trevor. All right. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. I, Carolyn. Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Trevor McDaniel. Okay, thank you. Um, Fran, do you want to like, want to vote? Oh, he has a voice. <laughs> okay, Mike, uh, I propose that we um, uh, have the schools uh, go remote through January eighth, and I'll make that motion. You can second it. I'll second it and, and vote in the affirmative. Thank you. I likewise. I so. And then Carl, um, if you um, at some point could get your Board of Health together and vote that um, motion one way or the other, that would be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. All right. Um, so now we're on to the next subject, sports, uh, what we came forward for. Um, and um, actually, I'm proposing to postpone that. Um, I was going through my notes. I think we have until January 14th to make that decision. And um, I, I, looking at the numbers in Hampton County, I mean, they're higher than the state averages. And um, just thinking about the gym, I, I, I really, I know how hard it was. I, every, I went to every one of my kids' football games wrestling matches, crew races, even in college going around crew races. I, you know, I, it would be awful to miss your kids' events. So I, I, but I think we could get FCAT to tape it live and um, the sports live, and then we wouldn't have participants in the gym and that would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, I mean, it's just not a natural thing not to be yelling, you know, for your kids and, um, and the gym is very confined space, a lot of aerosols, you know, um, exposure. So I'm, I'm, we had voted, the school committee had voted that sports was going to proceed. And it was really gonna be coming down to a board of health decision. And I think if we have some more time to work on the protocols and, and we see the numbers continue to stabilize I'm, I, I mean, I really want our kids to play sports. And I, I feel like the community got really shook up in, no, in, in the beginning of December with the cluster that we had. And um, I think people want their kids in school. And if we can get the kids back into school successfully, then I feel like we will have an opportunity to vote, to go continue to go forward as the school committee voted to, to support this sports. I'm just a little nervous making that decision here in end of, November, end of December. I know I, I said 
well, you know, I'd feel better if we had a little bit more time, but I still feel like I need a little bit more time to make that decision. I am. Could, could we hear from maybe the athletic director on what that yes. impact would be? And um, is that still doable or is he out of time or, you know, what protocols have they thought of since the last meeting? Just like to hear some input. I don't know if Carl has, has a minute to. How's it going, everybody? Um, so regardless, if, if you're kind of in a pause mode in some ways, I can still go forward with all of the signups and things like that, because if there's a last minute decision that decides we're not doing anything, yep. I mean, that's, you know, we just throw away the signups, basically and refund money. Carl, that's can not, I just, can yeah. I just clarify, Carl? Yeah. My notes say that it was January 14th. You had to make, you had to make that decision, right? Or we had uh, to make a decision by? The 11th is actually the start date. Oh, the start date's yeah. the one. Okay. And then they, they, there wouldn't be any games until the 21st. Okay. So, That's good. Yeah. Um, um, so I did do things like go into the gym and measure off six foot intervals in the bleachers and that type of thing. Um, you know, but I, it sounds like you were mentioning the idea of not having fans, but just have, because I did talk to the FCAT people and, and they're willing to, to cover as many games as they possibly can. Um, so any guidance you have for me on there would be great. Um, but in, in terms of going forward, I, I'm, 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 I've been planning, I'll continue to plan that it's on until I hear different. That's basically kind of how I've been handling it um, so that it's not a rush at the last minute. Uh, like my, my thought Ooh. is basically after this meeting, tomorrow morning, I would send out to families the sign up, sign up thing with all the, what we're gonna offer and, um, and go from there and see what happens with the numbers as we move forward. I don't know how other boards of health feel, so I I, I want to certainly open it up. This is just my personal hesitation. That's all. Mm -hmm. Carl, um, yeah. which so it's uh, basketball, hockey, I skiing, and um, what other sports? Um, wrestling has been moved to the spring, so that's no longer anything to think about. Anyway. So yeah, basically basketball, um, skiing. And hockey. The, the girl co-op is one girl co-op hockey that you guys gave approval to that she's already started waiting yeah. to see what happens here or moving forward. Um, and then the other sports would all start later, like I said, on the 11th. And did we ever figure out whether we have control over hockey? I mean, is it just mm -hmm. our goal to Greenfield? <clears throat> That's above my pay grade. I'm not sure about yeah, that. So <laughs> you, you don't you don't really have control over hockey as a boards of health because it takes place in Greenfield. So the Greenfield Board of Health takes care of hockey there. Um, you know, I think you're advising the school committee on information that you have um, and that kind of thing. I guess we're really looking at basketball. I think when you get down to the- That's what I was going to say. Skiing's an outdoor yeah, sport. Right. Yeah, I don't have a problem with skiing. And I think we had already discussed that. that the and you're going to no have problem with transportation. Right. right. And, right. and if we could- if we could work out some way of having no faint, you know, no um, audience and, you know, parents and, I mean, it's just not natural not to be yelling and screaming for your kids. Well, and I, I have to tell you, I love, I mean, basketball is one of my favorite sports in the entire world. Here's my problem with basketball <laughs> is it's probably one of the dirtiest sports in the entire world because we got sweating kids, wiping their faces, wiping their noses, wiping their eyes, wiping their mouths, touching a ball, everybody touching the same ball, touching their own faces, their noses, their mouths. Okay, that's during the game. That's like while they're in. And, and then we're in a enclosed gymnasium with coaches screaming, players screaming at each other, bench players screaming, and potentially fans screaming. This is the worst. This is the worst sport to have. Any other sport is less sweaty, less nose running, less wiping your face, and touching the same ball everybody else is touching. Um, so the, and so we've knocked off every other sport. We're fine. We're only at the dirtiest sport we've got. Um, if anyone else can help me out here. I, this is, this is like. Dave Wolfram. Dave. And I can speak from experience with my two daughters that played at Frontier. Basketball was a full contact sport. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It was when I played it. So. And totally we're in a very low county. Our county is low. <laughs> Our kids in general follow the rules. Mm -hmm. Our families in general, we've got a few, <laughs> follow the rules. <laughs> Who are they playing? Mm -hmm. That's my problem. I have a question here. Carolyn, for, for sure, Carl, um, what sort of modifications are you planning with your your preparations now for for all of these sports? Because some sports are allowed to continue with with modifications, and I, you know, before I weigh in, I'd like to know what modifications you're attempting or planning for uh, sure, for all sure. the sports. Mm -hmm. So the the state set all sorts of guidelines for that, like they have individual sport. Yep. committees that made the guidelines for each sport. Um, they're all on the MIAA COVID task force page if you really want to read into the details of it. But for basketball, for example, um, the benches would be spread out like across in seats as opposed to like sitting next to each other in a line. Um, they would wear masks during the game. They ha would have a spot somewhere that is away from everybody else for a mass break area. Uh, there's a limit to the amount of people in the gym on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, they've changed the rules to basketball. One of the one of the ones that comes to mind is uh, there's no more like taking the ball out of bounds underneath the basket that they're scoring on because that mm -hmm. creates a, you know basically a, a cluster of people together. Uh, free throws when there's two free throws on the first free throw, there's no other people inside the key standing there waiting for the ball. They wait away until the second free until the second shot that there'll be a rebound on. Um, <laughs> there, there's not much for skiing obviously because it's outside and, and we're going to have them have their own rides. So we've essentially um, gotten rid of the, you know, the bus ride would be the biggest thing for that. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Did you say the, yeah. the kids are wearing masks while they're playing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of the yeah. guidelines that yeah. has to, yes. Yeah. Ah, well, that changes a lot. Yep. Yeah. And um, another one of the rules is uh, the five second rule where basically if, if for those of you that don't know rules about basketball, um, if someone is closely guarded for five seconds, it would typically be against the rules. And they're gonna um, especially enforce that is the way it was kind of described in, in one of the meetings I went to, to make sure kids aren't just like right next to each other playing defense super close. Um, so. Well, yeah, so basketball. wearing masks on the court completely changes my opinion. Yeah, no, Kaylin, they're gonna wear masks, but how often are they gonna wipe down the balls and stuff? <laughs> So, well, you know, you um, get it through sweat. Yep, they're gonna they are gonna transmission through sweat. At the very least, it's each quarter, um, and we could do more than that too if 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 that was something that was like a hang up. Um, mm -hmm. But the guidelines say to change the ball each quarter. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. How yeah. often are they going to change their masks? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. That, I mean, that's something where I, I would like to think that the coach and the players would say like this mask is getting gross so I have extras and I change them you know so. that's gonna be huge so that change okay so that changes my argument I mean I'm because I'm telling you because that's the disgusting part of basketball is that that's where the COVID would be transmitted because you get it the respiratory mm -hmm. so and if we don't allow parents or you know spectators in the gym spectators. Caitlin yeah and if it was and all on tape I mean, we could get FCAT to tape it live so people could sit I've in their cars it. and watch it or something like that, you know? Olivia, go ahead. So I'm going to steal Caitlin's Debbie Downer crown for a sec. <laughs> um, and I just Quiet. I just want to um, see if I'm getting this, this correct. And I'm not against, I really, really think that now more than ever, kids need to work on teamwork and have an athletic outlet, absolutely. Um, but what we're saying with basketball is what, what I'm hearing and may be incorrect, is that we are not allowing in our classrooms for mm -hmm. 20 kids masked, set apart, quietly doing their work. That's not safe. We can't even have three cohorts in because that's not safe and that's fine. But we can have, and we tell everybody, don't go anywhere. Don't have anyone over for any of your events. Don't go to any parties. Mm -hmm. Going to invite 24, because it's vars it would be varsity and junior varsity would come at the same time 
just so it's always the same school for contact tracing. So we're going to invite 24 students and then coaches from another school to come into our school where we won't even allow kids from our town to come into to play and run around in enclosed space. Is that accurate? That's why I was kind of wanted to delay a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree with you, Olivia. I think we should. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't play. I absolutely think these kids need this and they need all of this exercise and basketball skills and basketball teamwork is so very important and as important as academics to, for some kids, for sure. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just trying to um, mm -hmm. justify some things in my mind that I feel there seems to be a disconnect a little bit. But Olivia, you also understand, I think schools should be open. Oh, absolutely. I think they should be open and open. Yeah, me too. Five days a week and, you know, so. But Caitlin, hey, Caitlin, you gotta remember, we're dealing with teachers who are union people. They have the unions behind them and, and we wanna protect them also by, if, they're, if they want to, if I'm getting these emails and they're telling me that we should go a little bit longer with our break because of, you know, because of Christmas, then that's why we're listening to them a little bit. I'm not sure if how many emails you've gotten today, but I know all the school committee members got the same emails today. Yeah, because we and, have- hold on, hold, hold on for a second. And if you watch the NBA this weekend, <laughs> they did, I think it was 590 tests for the teams that were playing, including everybody, and out of the 590 that were playing basketball, two came back positive, and these are adult males, and maybe some female coaches too, but two out of the 590 that played basketball this weekend, it was some, I'm not sure where I, where I heard it or saw it, but they only had two people that came down positive. So you're just proving that your unions are dictating to you something that's ridiculous and you're just going for it. I work for the health and safety of my community. I'm not being dictated to what out of fear by unions that you're afraid are going to walk out of your classrooms. That's not my problem. What happens if your police department says <laughs> this is not safe? You're going to tell them to go back to work? They're unions. <laughs> you're gonna I, I, them? That's not you don't you don't understand. We're not gonna. We're not. Let's not talk about that. We've already made a decision. We've already voted for the eleventh. And yeah. your teachers need to take a person, make a personal decision. They have to either retire, take some time off, or make a decision. So can I? But you're also talking about teachers in Sunderland a month ago that wanted to go four days, full time. <laughs> Every and I class. think there's a lot that still do. They're not playing basketball, right? It's yeah, okay. well, well, we're talking about basketball right now. Fran, did you have a question? Yeah, I think we should uh, move this along, either table it um, till we get more information and get some well, idea I, on this. I, I'm not I want, I don't want Carl to feel like he's looking. Well, um, so I think the, the, the point of order there is that one, it's the Deerfield Board of Health decision because Deerfield controls Frontier, just for clarity on who, who's making yes. votes on what. It's mm -hmm. just that we, we want to work together though. Right, the school committee and the school committee has already made a decision to move athletics forward. And so I guess we are waiting on, if unless the Board of Health has wants to make a decision tonight, we're gonna move, continue to move forward with athletics. And if the numbers spike or there's concerns, if you'd like to see different things in place for fans, because those are the things that you have control over. You know, I, I just want to make it clear because there's yes. 80 people watching and someone's going to be, um, you know, you know, counting the, well, I, counting I, all the what, what's. I can, yeah. we can, as the Deerfield Board of Health, make that decision mm -hmm. sometime in the first week of January. I, I would feel more comfortable if we continue the discussion with Carl. However, if, if the other towns boards of health want to join in on our meeting, I would certainly have a four town board of health meeting with the school committee um, because I feel like it's very important to be, um, we all have input and consensus on what we're trying to do. So um, I always think that we're smarter together and we come to a better decision, even if it is the Deerfield Board of Health decision. So um, 
I guess uh, I feel uncomfortable voting tonight on on the January 11th start at this point based on the number, uh, you know, for hockey, the Hampton County numbers are higher than the state numbers. And I realize that Greenfield is a deciding factor, you know, has control over this. But um, as from a Deerfield point of view, I, I would, my input right now is that I'm a little nervous about the Hampton County. So I would not want to endorse hockey at this point. Skiing is not an issue in my mind because it's outside and if the kids wear a mask, it's, it's going to be limited risk or low risk. Um, basketball, I think we can work this out. Um, um, I'm sorry, Caitlin, you didn't realize that the kids were, were going to wear masks. Um, but I, my, my main problem was I was worried about having spectators in the gym. I just felt it was going to be very congested. Um, mm -hmm. and any, any mitigating factors of having the kids wipe down balls and being spread out and all that would be, um, you know, wouldn't matter because you had all, all these spectators there. Even if it was a limited number, it still would be too much. So um, I feel like we can work some of these details out. I don't know how um, Trevor and um, Dave feel about this. I would feel a little bit better if Trevor and Dave had a, um, spoke up. Uh, so so I, um, <clears throat> I'm okay. I'm cer certainly okay with skiing and, um, and I, I feel pretty good about hockey. My, my biggest concern is just spectators in, in the basketball I think there. I think our staff and our directors are going to keep people safe, um, keep the kids safe, and um, so. So, just my biggest fear is is that spectator. If we could get FCAT to film it, and you know, I've, I've been to soccer games and there aren't there are no people watching them. So I think that's you know that's a safe way to do that. Um, it allows the kids to play and. Um, and, and and I think I think the director and, and the coaches will keep keep the kids safe. So I, I'm I'm pretty good moving forward. Um, if we if we could see something about keeping the spectators out of, out of basketball, that's about that's my only concern, really. There are no games till the 21st, correct, Carl? That's correct. Yeah. How about you, Dave? How do, how are you feeling on this? Wow. Well, you know, I don't have any issue with the kids practicing within their own group. Um, it, mm -hmm. When it comes to the games and traveling, mm -hmm. that's another concern that I have. So, um, well, how about if we vote to move forward with the sports um, and then we uh, look, look towards, you know, maybe that week. Uh, I mean, we have a, our next... Um, meeting. Well, we would have a, a board of health meeting before, um, I think the 14th or something like that. So it'd be before the 21st, and and then we can review what the numbers are, um, the cases and stuff like that um, locally, and then um, sit, you know, find out what Carl is doing um, to mitigate as much as possible on the basketball, and then we could decide about the games. Um, I, I, I hate to say no, um, but I, and, and if we can eliminate the spectators, I think this is going to be, make a huge, dis, you know, impact on my decision. Mm -hmm. I'm, just Carolyn, a nervous, I'm just a little nervous still in some of the numbers in the other counties. Ham, Hampshire County is coming down, Berkshire County is stabilizing, just Hamden County seems to be still very, very high. Just for, just for clarity. The basketball is only with Franklin County schools. Right. Oh, it's only Franklin County. Okay. And well, that makes me even feel better because the numbers on the other schools are very low too. Carolyn, there's two hands up. Oh, okay. Go ahead, um, whoever it is. Yep, yeah, Melissa and then Keith. Oh, I think I see Phil too in the corner. Yeah, okay. Phil's on there too. I, I wonder if there's any insight you can give us, Carl, about kind of protocol in and out of the mask off area, you know, whether or not there's hand washing in and out of the mask off area, if that's an area for water breaks, and if there's hand washing as they come back into play, otherwise kind of mitigating factors of you can drink or eat and then put your mask back on, but you don't have to wash your hands, you know, 
those things would be, I think, concerns heading back into play. Sure. Uh, one of my thoughts is in making the air the, that uh, mask break area, I would make it near the door, like at the door. Um, another one idea I got from uh, Darius actually was maybe to get a tent that goes right outside the door so the kids could actually go step just outside. Um, where, you know, going in and out of that, they would have their, um, we have like the, the, the hand sanitizer stands we have at school here where they could sanitize, you know, on the way in and out of there. Um, so they could bring their water bottle, have the mask off, take a drink, take their mask break sanitize, come back and to their seat. To their, um, seat. We, I've also ordered countless um, sanitizing wipes like out of a bucket. So, you know, I will be at the games helping to sanitize things, assisting in any way I, 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 I can to you know, try to make it as safe as possible. Does that answer that question? Yeah. yeah. I, I, who is the other person? And then Phil? Yeah, I know. Alex, who Keith, is the other person? Keith, yeah, Keith, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, so, Carolyn, I think you uh, found your way onto what I was going to ask, what the Board of Health was exactly going to vote on. Because if we've voted to move ahead with sports, whether it was the vote going to be on shutting the seasons down or games. And, and I think a lot, what we've seen a lot of schools do is approve sports, especially practices to start and then determine games going forward. So that's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly want the kids to participate and do stuff. And uh, it is, as Olivia pointed out, it is, is extremely important and healthy for kids. And some kids, it is cr critical. So I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of that. I'm just was worried about the exposure. So it, it's actually, Darius just made me feel a lot better that it's just Franklin County because our county actually is doing very well. It has traditionally done well through this whole pandemic. So um, you are inviting other people in, but um at the moment we're higher we're more more the risk for other people so um i i guess i would make a motion um for dave and trevor um to move the sports forward and continue and then um i guess i would like a review at our um january i think it's 14th meeting mm -hmm. um yeah, oh no, January 13th meeting would review um, whether we participate in games. I'll second that motion. Okay, let's, um, thank you. Uh, roll call vote, Dave. Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Carl, I hope that will help you out. Um, and then we will talk about how, how we're gonna handle the games, I guess. Um, that would be the big I, thing. I, yeah, I appreciate what you're doing. And I certainly um, don't envy your position as I also get emails from parents and I can understand the, the kinds of emails you get. So uh, I appreciate you know the thoughtfulness you guys are all putting into this and um, you know letting it go forward and, and making the, the decision, the best decision you can with the most information possible. That's all I can really ask. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, there's one more hand if you'd oh, like. Oh, okay. Uh, go CJ. Ahead. Maybe. Hi. Hi there. Um, I'm one of the athletes at Frontier, and I just wanted to say, but you're voting later on about the games. But just as a player, maybe we should have one parent for in case of injury at our games. Yep. Like one parent per player. But I mean, you're voting later on about the um, games, so. Uh, CJ, like I I'm, I'm thinking that parents would be sitting in their car and watching it live kind of thing. I mean, that was what I was envisioning because honestly, I mean, I even watched my grand grandkids games, basketball games. So I have to say, you know, not watching your kids is awful. So for a parent or a grandparent. And um, so we, we need to figure out something with the FCAT so they can do it live. And then if parents are in the parking lot in the cars, um, they themselves are safe. And then the gym is safe. And, and if anything did happen, they, you know, they're right there for their kids. Thank yeah, you. that totally works. Thank you for speaking up, CJ. Yes, know. thank you. We, we really appreciate it. Alex, can you tell if there's anybody else that wants to say anything before we um, end our meeting? Yep. Um, what? Philip, did you want to speak? I wasn't uh, sure. Well, just, just a couple things. Um, before you give skiing a free pass, just 
take a look at this, the, the studies in the news from France and Italy, then net closing down ski lifts nationally because of the confirmed community outbreaks and ski lifts. <laughs> and so, I mean, I just said, you know, but, but, um, but, but when you think about it, it makes sense because you're, you're outside, you're outside, you're outside and your nose runs, you use your gloves to wipe your nose, you get in your ski lift, uh, it, you, the, it gets all over, next 30 seconds later, the next person's in that same seat with their running nose, it gets all over. And it makes sense that ski lifts, um, skiing might, what I'm trying to say is skiing might actually be the danger, most dangerous of all these sports. So. Well, I'm hoping kids will wear masks and I'm hoping that they will pl pack plenty of Kleenexes. <laughs> I'm uh, guessing but, the volume of skiers is different. Yeah. yeah. From uh, different countries. Yeah. Yeah. So got to pick your poison. That's all. That's right. I know. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I'm so appreciative of everyone willing to come together and work together to try to have a um, consensus on what we're doing, wow. which is best for us, uh, you know, our kids, our community. So thank you very, very much. Happy New Year, everybody. Well, Stay happy. home. Yeah. <laughs> Stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Frontier Regional will have a motion to adjourn. Hi, Bob, I got a quick question before you adjourn. Yes, sir. Are we going to have to have any kind of meeting based upon the Board of Health's decision on February, I'm sorry, on January 8th for schools about when we're going to exactly open and uh, the difference between uh, tier one kids and then the, the, the other tiered kids? I think. I think the tier one kids are going to be going unless unless Darius wants to chime in, but I would imagine the tier ones are going to stay on schedule. Everybody else will be remote through the eighth and we'll start up school on the 11th on, on a hybrid system. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, Darius. Yep, because the Board of Health voted the remote model. And so I'm going to continue the remote model we used right before break. So that'll, that'll be my way around allowing those tier one students to continue in. Uh, thank you. Good question, Keith. We got a motion to adjourn. So I move, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Bill. I'll second. You want to do roll call? Sure. Bob? Yeah. Bill? Yes. Bill? Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Melissa? Yes. Olivia? Yes. All right, we're done. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Fran, do you want to um, adjourn your meeting? Oops. Fran, I think you're still muted. I make a motion to adjourn the Wheatley Board of Health meeting. Uh, so gonna, I don't know if Mike's already gone. <laughs> Maybe moot. You might. You might be. Well, I think you got. Nope. So I vote to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Fran. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Most Thank you. Caitlin, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, I make a motion, or uh, Bruce, uh, well, I make a motion to adjourn the uh, Sunderland Board of Health meeting. Second. Uh, Bruce Bennett seconds. Uh, Ken? He's gone. Bruce, I you vote. Yes. And Caitlin Rock votes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Have a great Trevor, you want to make a motion to adjourn? Yeah, please. <laughs> motion to adjourn, Deerfield. Board of Dave, all from a second. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. All Thank those you. in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year, Aye. everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs>